welcome back to Fantasy Cast, the home of fantasy Premier League podcasting. Well, the unofficial home of Family for a Premier League fantasy podcast. Kind of butchered that intro a little bit, but um, we're gonna move on swiftly. Um, how are you both, Amir and Mark, today in the studio? Being well, virtual thank you, studio. Being well. Welcome back, book, and I'm ill. So, not fine. <laughs> and, you do, and you just moved to a different country? All things considered, all good. Mm-hmm. So, how did our game week, well, how, how amazing did your game week six squads go this week? Yeah, I think for the first time uh, this season, I actually had a good team actually. Not too amazing, but um, good enough, good enough. Yeah. Amazing nonetheless. Mark? Yeah. yeah. I got 59 points. So that was pretty good. I had some good hits. And uh, surprisingly, a lot of bad picks as well. Mm-hmm. Or like bad performances. Well, that's like, um, that's not good to hear. But um, oh well, we can move on. The less said about my team, the better. Um, let's move on to talk a little bit more about that in our game week review. Okay, so change your plans. I am now hosting this uh, section of the podcast. <laughs> As we as we move on to talk about uh, our game week preview, um, so going first we have our um, old host Wei Hong. How did your game week go, Wei Hong? Went absolutely horrible. Thirty-seven points, um, two zeros, one penalty miss, two injuries, um, no clean sheets, and only one goal. <laughs> two two goals. Um, would have been oh, another geez. attacking return on the bench, first bench, so that was a little bit annoying. Um, worst game week since I never played FPL is definitely not 519. Since but, Burnley beat yeah, Liverpool. Si- since, <laughs> since, um, since sliced bread, never happened to me before. Um, let, oh, let's move on. All right, I, I suppose things can only get better uh, from there. Um, yeah, can you move on. What? How did your game go? Uh, 59 points, I think. Uh, Masa got an assist, uh, Pinnock got a goal. I know Gray got an assist, I know Salah scored. Uh, Antonio scored, and I think the Hota score or assist. I think might have been an assist. Uh, and then everything else was like a blank ish for me. I got I had Mark where he in my defense, and then Mendy and Lukaku both got two. Ronaldo got two as well, and then my bench was like. Because Marcel was a sub on for me, so Tish Mekas originally was starting. So he had zero. And then I had two Brighton players that got like blanks as well. So, yeah. All right. Good game before you, Mark. Uh, let's hope you can build on that. Now, moving on to my team for this game week. For the first time this season, I think um, I actually did pretty well. Two points less than uh, Mark with uh, 57, and I actually got points all around, except for my defense, which did really poorly. Uh, so that's something I need to work on. Um, so surprisingly, my goalkeeper, Emiliano Martinez, kept a clean sheet against my United away, so that actually paid off. Um, all, my, uh, all my midfielders, all four of my midfielders in um, Salah, um, 
the my the my gray uh, Yuri Tillman and Clay from Leeds got um uh, points for me and my three strikers of Antonio uh, um Kim Maximan and Cristiano Ronaldo got me uh, 20 points altogether but with only Ronaldo blanking who is unfortunately my captain so could have worked on that part but overall pretty good pretty good that's very good from your team, Amir, for the first time this week. When you host, you do well. You like oh, to host the end? <laughs> maybe, maybe. We'll see how it happens. So. You did a pretty good job there. Um, let's move on to the next section. I'll take over from now to our game week preview for game week seven. So game week seven this week kicked off again on Saturday the 2nd of October where Manchester United um, host Everton at um, Old Trafford as per usual they're not going to move to a new stadium just like that and then we have the 3 p.m. kickoffs um, Burnley against Norwich Southampton away at Chelsea Leeds hosting Watford Wolves against Newcastle at the Molyneux before the late night kickoff on Saturday, where Arsenal will visit Brighton after the 3 1 win against Tottenham. And then moving on to Sunday's fixtures, we've got three. We've got three 1 pm kickoffs on, um, oh no, 2 pm kickoffs, pardon me. Um, beginning with Crystal Palace after their strong start to the season, we'll visit, uh, they'll be hosting Leicester. Spurs three games defeat in a row. They will go and um, play against Aston Villa, who beat Manchester United last week. And then West Ham will be playing newly promoted side and starting very, very well in the Premier League season, Brentford, before the popcorn field kicked off with a lot of FPL assets in there. Liverpool against Manchester City to round off this week's fixtures. So, starting with you, Mark, um, Chelsea against Southampton. Chelsea's got a very, very strong fixture swing coming up this week. And this is your way yep, all the next. Yep, and the next upcoming about three to four game weeks, Chelsea have a really good run. Um, obviously, Southampton not in like the greatest of shapes. I believe they are... What they lost to Wolves, they drew against Man City very well. Um, they drew against West Ham, and then they drew. They've been drawing a lot. I don't think they've won a game yet, so they've either drawn or lost. So I think that's an easy win for Chelsea. Um, they haven't scored in the last three games, as well. <coughs> um, um, another fixture that I want to talk about is the Norwich game against Burnley. I think. Uh, Norwich have conceded about 20 goals in, or something like that in all competitions recently. And and uh, I think if you want to target a Burnley player, just go for like a striker like what Ashley Barnes. I think that'll be good enough. If you want some points, like your best bet of points is like basically Ashley Barnes or Dwight McNeil at this point. Um, if not, uh, try and target the Chelsea player. Uh, maybe even a Wolves player because they're playing Newcastle, right? So, yeah. I want to talk about Chelsea. Uh, just briefly, oh, we talked and... about that last week. Uh, yeah. Amir, what are you going to say, by the way? Pardon? Um, you don't have a uh, Arsenal player. Oh, no, a Chelsea player in your teams at the moment. Um, Amir? I don't who, know. Who will you be looking to target this week? Are you going to... Are You gonna? You can't gloss off Chelsea, can you? Nope, they're uh, quite a strong team right now. Um, especially since uh, Tuchel, Thomas Tuchel has been uh, taking over. And uh, this game week, I think, uh, is quite favourable. They're playing... Um, Southampton at home, and the names uh, obviously we will be playing at the likes of Romelu Lukaku up top, or uh, in defense, Marcos 
Dr. Alonso, who not only can get the clean sheet points, but also the attacking returns as a defender. So I think those two are the score names um, currently for Fantasy Premier League. Mark, what assets? Uh, yeah, what I mean is that um, if you want to go big and go home, Lukaku for the next few game weeks. Uh, if you don't have the money, uh, go for Alonso, uh, <coughs> which is probably the biggest pick for a Chelsea player, e- even past Lukaku because of how expensive Lukaku is. Uh, yeah, that's for Chelsea. Um, I've already mentioned Burnley as well, so yeah. That's all. Amir, let's move on to your fixture this week. You've chosen the Leeds fixture. We haven't actually talked much about Leeds. You're playing Watford. Um, Leeds, obviously, we've spoken about that pre- uh, briefly last week, about how they are an injury-stricken side. Fared out well against West Ham while we're watching that game. What do you guys, what, what do you think about Leeds, Amir? Um, I think Leeds, um, it's like it's, a, it's taking a chance if you go with the players that they can blank or not. It's, um, it's hard to tell with Leeds because you see they're very good, or they, they're usually like it's mixed, uh, they have mixed forms basically. So, I think for this picture, we can expect to see goals considering the leaky defense for Leeds United this season, and also because Wolford has the man in form. Um, Ismaila, Ismaila Sar, um, going for for them in midfield and very cheap also. Um, rather than that, for Leeds United, um, Rafinha, granted he's fit, so uh, I chose this picture because of those um, two players mainly, but also I think because we can expect to see quite a few goals hopefully in this picture, so that's why. I I tend to agree on a lot of what you said about Leeds. Uh, the only thing I'll say is um, Watford have um, his their defense have been uh, holding out quite well from what we can see um, coming back about that this week. But obviously, Leeds are a very very prolific side. Um, going forward, as we know uh, from last season. Uh, Mark, anything to add? I think Leeds would be a really good challenge for that Watford defence because of uh, how high their attacking metrics are uh, still this season, despite what's been happening at the club. Um, I think for Watford, they'd actually just going to rely on the smallier star for this game because that's probably the best bet they've, they've got. Uh, Emmanuel Dennis might pop in poaching like a goal possibly because of how weak the defence have gone. Um, but yeah, high scoring game, definitely. Oh well, let's It'll move on. It'll be a fun uh, match to watch as well. Yeah, it will definitely be. I, I, I can see this being a uh... A 2-2 draw. Um, meanwhile, let's move on to Arsenal, who've got a very, very difficult start to the season, but have kind of bounced back, as we can see at the North London Derby. Um, 3-1 win against Tottenham. Brighton is well doing very, very well at the moment. They may, they could have got the top of the league uh, at the start of the season, uh, believe it or not, um, if they'd beaten Crystal Palace. But they didn't. Um, they two will face each other at the Amex Stadium um, coming to this week. Um, Brighton have been missing clean sheets in the last two games, which is quite un- which is which is a little bit of an unknown because at the start of the season we've been seeing Brighton getting clean sheet after clean sheet after clean sheet, but that has slowly. Um, start to, you know, fade away those clean sheets, um, which will concern people like me who are on Robert Sanchez owners um, for, for, for the goalkeeper, who are also owned by 25% of the game, 
uh, of, of FPL managers do own Robert Sanchez at the start of the season. And that could toss up people who are going for wild cards this week, because I know a lot of people are going on for wild cards this week to capitalise on the Chelsea um, fix the swing. Uh, moving on then, uh, Arsenal's defensive assets are getting really, really good, such as if you are looking to wild card, Aaron Ramsdale is a goalkeeper that you can be looking out for. Stands at amazing value. Arsenal's um, defensive stats are fourth best in the league in terms of expected goals conceded. Um, well, no, they're second best since game week four. They're, they're, they're actually one of the worst conceded goals. But if you look from, from game week four, when they start winning matches, only Man City have been performing better um, in terms of having expe- expected goals conceded. And that can also, you know, raise raise um, value on for defenders such as Ben White, who's quite cheap, 4.4. Uh, Takahiro Tomiyasu, I think that's his name, the right back, uh, 4.5 years. Um, yep. And... If you're looking to target Brighton players, they um, Brighton have registered three attacking returns in the last two games. Neil Mope, huge differential at the moment. Three less owned by less than three percent of the games. He'll take twenty five million. So if you're looking for a, a budget striker, he scored two goals. Uh, two of the last three goals have been scored by Neil Mope in the league so far. What do you guys think? We'll we'll talk about Arsenal first. We'll talk about their defence. What do you guys think about their defence? Okay, so uh, Arsenal and their defence, obviously obviously you mentioned before that, when you mentioned before that they've had a very shaky start to the season, but they have bounced back uh, with uh, three wins and uh, two clean sheets uh, coming out of that three wins with only um, conceding one goal which was against Spurs, uh, so Hsim Min Son. So I think, um, I think it would be a good time to capitalize on their defensive aspects, um, especially now, since they're um, trying to, uh, they're try- well, yeah, they're trying to get back on track. Now. So, yeah, good shot. Yeah. Uh... Obviously, Tommy Asu has been playing very well. Um, I think an inside shot would be Bayako Saka's attacking output, which has been uh, top notch for Arsenal. It's wrong other than Sanchez. Uh, Shane Duffy, or actually Pascal Gross, because his attacking numbers and expected assists has uh, been quite high so far this season, and he's created a lot of uh, chances for Brighton. So that's another good potential player to invest in. And then that, I think, uh, maybe even someone like uh, Trossard might be a good. Uh, if you've seen Brighton play, he's been playing pretty well despite uh, not getting that many points. Um, so yeah, but mainly go for uh, Duffy and Pascal Gross, if you can. Yeah, I think that um, those assets are very, very good for Arsenal coming to this week if you're looking for differential options. Well, let's move on to the next section of the podcast then. Our Twitter question. Let's start off with the Twitter question then. Um, Simon Johansson um, starts uh, asking us for this week, your best one week game week seven punch for the ones who are wild carding in game week eight. Um, unfortunately, the only problem, the only, well, the only, the only problem is that only, my, only myself can do the game week seven wild card. But that, but that's not really a problem to me because um, 
that means we have more opportunities to you know freely discuss what we are um inspiring or what we are planning to do um mark in the previous section already talked about chris wood um for this week's um podcast what what I would say this Ramila Shah is another option, but we also previously talked about him already. But um, other options that are available for this week for the tough fixes, before the tough fixes get tougher. Would you guys say, you know, an option like Timu Puki is a one week punt? Is it a feasible one? Yeah, if you want to lose points. <laughs> nah, that's not fair. That's not fair. Yeah, how many goals have Norwich scored so far? One. Very little. Zero. I swear one. it's zero. One. Yeah, it's one. It's one. Boogie. And, and it's Pookie. Yep. <laughs> so, Pookie. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh, God, they scored one against. Two. Two. Oh, yeah. They scored two. It's two. Yeah, one of them's Pookie and their attacking numbers are shite. No, two, uh, two of them has been from Pookie, actually. Oh, damn. Pookie scored twice. Yeah, two. twice in six game weeks. I mean, he's only scored twice as well. The man's got an expected <coughs> goals of 2.04. For a one week punt. What do you guys think against um, Burnley away at Turf Moor? Historically, uh, difficult place to come yeah, to. I think, it's a, I, think it's a, I think it's a shout. Nah. I'm thinking it's a shout. <laughs> you seriously want to pun Timo Puki against Burnley? Shout, it's the best shout. It's the best shout. Not gonna lie. Yeah, fair, but you know how Burnley play. They're quite rough. So like it's not no. not that Pookie's gonna get bullied, but it's like other people like Todd Cantwell, I think, and like Milo Rashisha, who hasn't been on the form since that season where Werder Bremen was getting relegated quite badly, and that was two seasons ago. Other than that, um, <laughs> Tibu Pookie. What do you guys think about Leicester against Crystal Palace? Jamie Vardy, that's a one-week pun. Telemans. Telemans? I was thinking of Telemans. Yeah. Yeah, Telemans is a great shot. Uh, it's been amazing so far. I guess Vardy would game? be a good pun as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Tiedemans did play. Um, my apologies. Gone in his sis. Yep. He played all 19 minutes this season. Yep, so far. Until he gets injured again. Or suspended. Yep, or suspended. Apart from that, again. we don't have much one-week punch. I'd say these two are the standout one-week punters. If you really want to go for one, Jared Bowen, that's one that you can look for. Is Mayla Shah, we, we already talked about it in the previous section. So, yeah, that runs off our section for our Twitter question this week pretty, pretty fast. Let's move on then to our player talk, where we're going to talk about our gets, removes and evades. Still have trouble saying it. So let's talk about the players that will be interested that um, of looking to get in for this week. I'm going to start off then, as per usual, with the gets this week. Marcos Alonso, we've already spoken a lot about him. He's basically an FPL gold mine. Um, not a very, very good defender, but a very, very good attacking and his place as a defender in FPL. Therefore, he's going to get you to his clean seats. And with Chelsea's clean run of fixes coming up, first of all, starting at Southampton at home, they, they face next Brentford, Norwich, 
and Newcastle and Burnley in their next five fixes. And fixes looking good. And their stats are also looking very good as well. Chelsea have the um, four in this whole season, they've got the fourth lowest expected goals conceded stat just behind Man City, Brentford and Everton with a stat of 6.61. They've They've kept clean sheets in 20, no, 18% of the games to, for eight, oh yeah, 80, oh, seven, 60 something percent of the game. Four out of six clean seats for Arsenal and uh, Chelsea. Um, wrong team there. So I think there's a lot to love with Marcos Alonso. What do you guys think? Um, yeah, I think we've uh, talked about him before and I've also mentioned this before with Marcus Alonso. Um, a defender who can get um, very good um, attacking returns um, considering um, his um, position as a uh, wing back. So Marcus Alonso um, and Chelsea's uh, wing backs in general will try to uh, provide the width on the wings. And that's where Mm, that's where um, they're most efficient as well in the wing back position while attacking. So yeah, if, um, and and also Chelsea are at home against Southampton, um, um, which also not guaranteed, but there's a um, likely chance that Chelsea will be keeping a clean sheet. And considering they've only considered two goals this season, I think Marco Alonso is a very very good shout. Um, for your defensive aspects. Mark, what do you think about... I, I will um, say one thing, right? Uh, um, the Champions League is tonight for Chelsea when we're yeah, recording on, this. On the recording. And then, uh, what, well, this is coming up Friday? Thursday. 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 So I just realized this. Marco Alonso might play tonight, and then he will get rested for for that Southampton game. But I think for like Chilwell, that either happens this game week or next week when we play Norwich, because we all know how easy that's going to be. So that's the only, I guess downside of getting Marcus Alonso because uh, he played in that Man City game over the weekend that we lost in uh, and then we've got that Juventus match tonight which is really big and then it's that Southampton game so it might just be a rest for him but over the next few game weeks as an overall investment it'll be very good Marcus Alonso is prone for rotation risk but Chilwell hasn't been up to fitness. He hasn't been doing particularly well. Um, it is too well. Um, so that increases Alonso's, um, you know, value in the squad. Um, moving on to you guys then. Let's talk about some players that you'll be interested to get in. Amir, who have you got? I've actually got, I've got a couple in mind. Um, the first being um, uh, Neil Mopay from Brighton, who are playing against um, Arsenal. And, you know, are you saying that by my stats that have um, generated this? No. No, 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 no. no. I've seen, I've seen, I was actually thinking about him to get his uh, on the watch list, uh, but not necessarily, not necessarily, doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to get him. Because they have played with Arsenal, there's a bit of history there, you know, um, in the past. So I think um, that can that might play in uh, the psychology side of it with Neil Mopay. And he's also in good form. Two goals in the last two games and also Brighton early, early, um, looking really, really good this season. Uh, Mopay has um, four goals already this season in six games. And I think... Um, it's not bad chat at all for him, for um, managers, active managers to buy him this game week against Arsenal. The other one 
um, I was thinking about just thinking about was uh, Ismail Ismail Asar, and uh, even though I know that Wei Hong has uh, this day for for place to evade, but I think with uh, Leeds, um, you know, not not so good defensive defensively this, defensive this season. I think um, um, uh, get, capitalizing um, with getting with my left side is, uh, is a bad kind of shout. And Watford are looking uh, quite good this season. Um, they're currently 12th after being just promoted. Meanwhile, Leeds are 18th and they've conceded 14 goals this season. Yep. And just six games. So, yeah, those two are on my watch list. Okay, uh, for me, I think I'd go for uh, Ismail Asa as well. Um, as Samir said, he's been playing very well this season. Um, another player that I'm thinking about is also uh, Pascal Gross, which I've mentioned earlier. Uh, one of the highest uh, chance creation numbers. Um, I think uh, I also wanted to get Marcus Alonso, as my home mentioned earlier as well. Um, yeah, um, and if you haven't yet, uh, I've already got him, but if you haven't, uh, Damari Gray, he's been playing very well, getting a return basically every single game that he's played in the Premier League. Um, he may not get one against United, which is coming up this weekend, but the next few game weeks are pretty good for him, like West Ham. It's not as bad as everyone thinks. So Damari Gray would be a good shot to go. Well, some shells then. Um, I've got on my shell list Patrick Bamford. He's injured. Um, he won't play. How long is he injured for? Don't know. He's Great. doubtful on. He's got the um uh, the Dori the the Dorito the Dorito of oh, death. Oh, he's orange. Great. Okay, not not the Dorito then. Um, probably ketchup or something like that. So I think that's a sign to me that he's going to, you know, he's not going to play. He's already dropping in value this week. I think it's a good time to get rid of him. What do you guys think? Yeah, for obvious reasons as well. Yeah, I agree. It's a, it's a simple agree. Like he's injured, he hasn't really performed well as last season. Which is expected because that was a really like big season from him last season, but it's not been working out well this season. Well, let's move on to your remove. Um, Trent Alexander Arnold for me because um, think because he's colourly recently changed doing recording. What? No, no, no. I've already gone for Trent Alexander Arnold even before the recording. Because um, he did, Liverpool are playing Man City at home, and City are uh, looking really strong um, currently. They only um, uh, City have the second most uh, goals for the league, if I'm not mistaken, behind Liverpool. Mm. Oh, no, City, yeah, City has scored 12 goals, and um, the performance against Chelsea. Um, uh, from Man City at the Stamford Bridge, I think, um, is a factor in removing Alexander Arnold because City are looking very determined to get um, joint um, points from the game, uh, at least a draw because uh, it's a tough run of fixtures for them. And um, yeah, so yeah, I think Trent Alexander Arnold will be going out of my team. Mark, do you tend to agree? Uh, yeah, I think the only downside is Mohamed Salah just dragging Liverpool through that game and like scoring like a lot of getting chances in for Mane and Hotta as well. 
Um, that's the only like thing I can disagree on for that Man City Liverpool game is Salah's like current blazing form. I mean, he just scored two against Porto in that five one win in the Champions League, so I don't see him stopping anytime soon. Yeah. And Salah has a good actually a good record against Man City. Oh uh, yeah. But it's just the the point from Arnold, I think he won't be so there's a chance that he won't be getting any points. And I think he's out. Mighty maybe. Well I've already sold him, which I just mentioned him as well, Hotter. For Smali Asar. Because I think the returns I get for someone cheaper is definitely more beneficial and now that I have more uh, Slightly more money in the bank, I think it's gonna work very uh, well for me. Or uh, moving Hotta because I see him getting like 15 goals and assists this season, maybe 10 goals and five assists. Um, he performs well, but not at like a top notch level where a medium price player would usually get a lot of points compared to Ismail Asar, who is a star player at Watford and is like. Slightly cheaper than the Hotta, so I decided to get a small SR in for Hotta. Right, let's move on to the players that we are going to avoid then for this week. Um, starting off with Amir, what do you guys think? Um, yeah, I've actually, I've actually told this to the guys before. But and they didn't seem like uh, they didn't seem to like the idea. But I went for um, Bukayo Saka for one team to avoid, essentially. Because um, if you look at the front teams, um, it's the first time this season uh, that he scored and has gotten um, above um, two digit um, points in uh, one game week. And uh, even though Arsenal are uh, looking good. Uh, three games uh, in a row, they've won. Um, they seem to bounce back from the horrendous start. Um, Saka has been transferred in by 125,000 uh, managers, I believe, if it's correct. Um, I've got one to avoid because I don't think um, he'll ne- necessarily get the um, attention he thinks. And there's also, I think, um, um, Better players that you can uh, get uh, instead of uh, Saka. And they're playing uh, <coughs> Brighton away, and Brighton are actually looking um, good this season. So, yes, yeah, that's my reason for going for Saka. Apologies to anyone who disagrees with me, but it is how it is. I don't need to apologize. You're entitled to your um, own opinion. Mark, who are you who are you gonna avoid this week? Avoid this week? Who are you gonna avoid walking into a trap? Uh, I think if I had to go really specific, Ruben Neves. Ruben Neves. Yeah, which is really like weird for me to say. Like, it's out of the blue, but, like, I've heard some people wanting a Wolves player that that would get points, and Ruben Nevis, for some reason, keeps popping up because he's been able to take free kicks and, like, set pizzas and stuff. I'm like, unless you're going to get, like, for someone who just takes uh, free kicks and whatnot. Like, I rather go for Mitinho because he's more likely to create chances from open play. Or like, uh, even Adama Traore, who has had about 40 successful dribbles, which is double Kylian Mbappe for most. And he's in Ligue 1, which is the French first division. So, yeah, avoid, like, evade Ruben, Ruben Nevis. I mean, I do you have any... Holmes, Mike. 
Amir, yeah. um, Amir, do you have anything to add about Ruben Neves? Um, not necessarily admitting, but yeah, I do see the point that Ruben Neves is um, Even though he's cheap, he's not um, a player that gets the return. Uh, you like one team fantasy football, so yeah, just one to avoid. He has good, he has good long shots though, in my life. And a good set piece to take in. But other than that, yeah. Right, let's move on to our final section of the uh, podcast this week, Captaincy. Right, Captaincy week seven then for this week. Salah's not an option this week as um, Liverpool are about to face a tough fixture against um, Chelsea, Manchester City, actually. Um, so that leaves us with a narrowed option available this week. I, um, I and Amir are going to support the Michael Antonio clan for this week. I think Michael Antonio's um, stats look very, very good. Registered a return for this week. Or once again, his expected goal stats is 0.94 per 90. Uh, expected return, 1.31 per 90. And West Ham are about to play Everton. Uh, Everton, Brentford. And um, that, uh, that to me, Liverpool managed to milk three goals out of Brentford. I think West Ham can do the same as well. Might not be a win, but I think they can do the same. I mean, any points to add? Um, uh, for Michael Antonio, his uh, stats really speak for himself. There's no need to, for me to add anything else. And as you can see, he's got five, uh, nine goal contributions, five goals and four assists in five games. Um, he did uh, miss the one game um, against Man United um, due to suspension, of course. But yeah, Michael Antonio, my captain, he's looking really, really good this season. And against a favourable opponent as well in Brentford. Um, so yeah, that's still not a bad uh, captain pick for me and my home game. Um, Mark, you're going to be re rebuttling now. Lukaku. Yep. Basically, I think uh, Michael Antonio is going to struggle a bit uh, Christoph Aya is really physically dominant. Uh, Pete Jansen also as well. Uh, the wing backs are gonna hard mark on uh, Saeed Ben Rama, uh, Jared Bowen if they're playing on the wings. Um, it's a four two three one versus a four uh, three four three, which can be very difficult uh, when you're the attacking side for the four two three one formation because as I just said uh, the way the marking system would work um, uh, which is why I'd rather go for uh, Lukaku as my captain instead of Mikel Antonio uh, I think Lukaku doesn't have to uh, battle against someone as physically as dominant compared to him um, like Salisu is pretty uh, strong but I don't think he's going to be as strong as Lukaku plus he's still I noticed he's still trying to sell in the wall despite being in the England for over a year um, I don't uh, I don't think uh, anyone from Southampton could really be dangerous unless we concede some really dangerous area free quick and James Ward crosses over the ball um, even then it's still a hard uh, thing to score against someone like Mendy, who's been doing really well. Uh, I guess another shot would be someone like Ronaldo as well, because they're playing against Everton. And despite how well Everton have been playing, they can, uh, they're they playing a really good Man United side, despite what happened against Villa. Uh, I still think United can uh, outscore uh, Everton as well. So, uh, yeah. But mainly for me, Lukaku. Yeah. 
Amir, would you agree? Would you change your mind? I actually changed my mind, but um, I wouldn't mind having this one person captain uh, at all. So we know he, we know uh, who Lukaku is. Uh, he's done it before in this league. He's done it time and time again in other leagues as well. And now on the uh, Chelsea side, he's uh, also started off really well. And also again playing against Southampton at home. Um, not a particularly um, strong team with all the respect to Southampton. I think uh, Lukaku will be um, capitalizing on that. And yeah, who knows? He might score a hat trick. <laughs> yeah, that might be possible. But we will have to see, obviously, in game week seven. The deadline this week is um, another. S- um, evening deadline well in Malaysia at least it is a 11am deadline for FPL yep, in the UK in the UK 2nd of October Saturday that's when you have to lock your teams this week if you want to compete against us um, using the FPL league code details are in the banner below the code is 55AQS0. It's 55AQS0. I sound like a radio presenter, don't I? Um, but apart from that, if you have... You used to be one before you got called out. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, if, you, if, you if you have enjoyed this video and want to watch another video, click here, I think. Might be the other way, actually. Here. If you want to subscribe to our channel, click here and give it a like. Just the subscribe should... button down below the video title. But, no, but there's the there's little card button there as well. Yeah, there's a button down there below, and there's the like button, and there's the comment section button. I do read your comments, even though I don't reply to it. So go and leave it a like. Um, drop a comment. My Instagram has now reached a hundred followers. Well done as well. And um, so, so that is going well as well. So, if you haven't followed my Instagram, do follow it. Let's give it to two hundred by the end of twenty twenty one. And my Twitter is available as well. I do deadline streams as well. That is on Saturday on Instagram Live. Daily with FPL experts as well that occasionally come on. But apart from that, I'll see you guys next week. Before any last words, both of you? Yep, good luck in this uh, game week, I suppose. And yep. we'll... uh, I've and we'll... got nothing. Yeah. I'm just ill. I'm going to sleep again. So, uh, good. Living the life. Well, see ya.